Hi, it's Bridget. Oh, we're not landscaped. <gasps> Hang on. Okay. Is that all right? Are we good? Are we good? See, what kind of what kind of shop am I operating here? What kind of business do I got going on here? Um, one woman show. That's what we've got. There we go. So we work our best to do our best and work with what we're given. Okay, so let's see. Where's the camera? Is here. This is how it works, you guys. All right. So let's try this again. Let's try it again. <clears throat> yes, I got a Disney World shirt on. Of course I do. Brilliant. Brilliant. All right. <laughs> Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here, as you know, is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're going to have an afterlife conversation with, with, can you guess? Now, if you've already read the title, by the time you see this, you'll know it's with Princess Diana. Of course, we have to have a conversation with her. She is lovely to speak to and speak with, and you can connect and speak with her no matter what your nationality is, which side of the pond you reside upon. She will communicate and connect with you if you are connecting in through the heart-based channel, especially if you're an empath. She is so so connected to empathic energy and I really respect and appreciate that and I know that you do too. All right, so we are doing this particular channeling video on, oh, it's really warm out here. Let me just say, oh, I have like this plastic chair I'm sitting on and oh, see if I had an editor, like a fancy videographer or something, I'd edit that out, but no, it was just like hot. Woo. It's June 2021. It's warm here where I'm at, like record-breaking heat right now. It's like 93 and it's later in the day. It's like almost dinner time here. And connecting in then from the shores of the United States where the beautiful little baby of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle has made her arrival known to all near and far. And what a beautiful name, Lilibet, Diana. And so we're gonna have a conversation with Diana about, in part about motherhood and the baby and, and other topics that may be related. All right, so it's lovely to see you. She says, it's good to be seen. I feel like we're a little more casual now. It's, it's so interesting, the evolution of how this works, because I feel like my rapport with you is a little more casual. Like, I don't feel like I have to be, like, super formal or anything like that. I want to be very respectful, of course. But, I like, the protocols and things, I don't know them anyway, so. But I feel really comfortable with you now, and, and it's really evolved over time. She says, good, good. How are you feeling? Because I know there's not like this heart kind of thing. Like, I don't know how to explain it. It's like you don't have a body and you don't have a persona or a humanness that you can project into your feelings. But I know as a spirit, the energy is what I'm asking about. How is your energy in response or reaction to or collaboration with this new baby and how are you feeling about it? I mean, Harry has a little girl. Oh, it's the sweetest. He says, oh, it's just the sweetest thing. Isn't it the sweetest thing? It's so precious, you know. Children really are, she says, quite, quite precious. They do change everything. They really change everything. How did your boys change your life? How, how would you say that they changed you? Oh, she says, oh, they, she's rather soft-spoken. And then when she laughs, she has this beautiful laugh that's just really light. And it's hard to explain, you guys. She's so, cla like, just class, elegance, just incredibly, just amazingly beautiful here. They change everything. They just, they have a way about them that makes them so, it, it reminds you of your, <laughs> it's funny, she says, it, it appears at first that they remind you of your inadequacies. Not, not because of the lack or the deficiencies you have, but 
because they are so special and so miraculous that how could you even, oh, there's a big, huge, some kind of bug flying around here, my goodness. They're such a, 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 a incredible contrast to how we are normally used to living that when they come into your life, when a, when a child comes into your life and it, it touches you, it, it changes you in a way that you can't, you can't very well explain. And even others who have felt this uh, can't, don't really have the words to adequately describe how much of, a, of an incredible realization you have to which life is precious. You, you, you experience, like it's not, and she says it's not the childbirth or the labor itself, that, that it's like this sense of earning this motherhood experience. She says it's, it's, not, it's not that, it's this, this unbelievable realization that this, this person is, is, is a gift, a gift to you. And she says it's like a gift from God to you that you are given it, it is it is bestowed upon you as though you are worthy there's this incredible assumption and trust that you are worthy and and will rise to the occasion to to give this beautiful being the equal amount of love and attention and care and and honor and respect that it deserves and there's this assumption that you just will be able to do that and most, most, I think, shared by most mothers would be this rather heavy responsibility of being charged with not, not as much framing or molding these lives, but, but to really our job is, is to constantly and consistently remove the barriers and obstacles that they may face that, and it's not as much t making life easy for them. That's not, that's not at all, that's not at all what I, um, she says, not at all. I cannot do the accent, but I can hear it. And it's so hard. You guys know how hard it is for me not to do accents. And I'm trying so hard not to do accents because dialects, and different slang languages can be really offensive to people. And so I'm trying really hard not to do it, but I can hear it. And so to my British friends, I'm sorry. I know I would have a horrible accent and sometimes it just slips in. Continue, please. She says, really, you're the one that's quite quite bothered by that more so than others would be. <laughs> she says, we are not as, she says, we are not as stuffy, like she's talking about the, the British people. She says, we are not as stuffy as you make us out to be. And then she's kind of saying, maybe you are the uptight ones. <laughs> she's saying, she's like, are you, are you jabbing me, Princess Diana, about being an American? <laughs> and she's like, well, your taste could be brought in, could be called into question. <laughs> She's trying me like the last several years. And <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Okay, okay. She's funny. Okay. <laughs> All right, so back to motherhood and the, the children. And, and she says, it is completely, a completely natural thing to feel less than adequate when when you are gifted with these incredible lives and she says and it's not so much removing barriers to make their lives easier it's it's really not about that there's nothing easy about life and in in particular being in the and she says the public eye being in the public eye and and recognizing that your life is instantly made for service that you were born into service you she says both Harry and William did not have choice into the life that they were born into. 
from a human context, she says. Of course, for um, what you know of afterlife, the soul is quite evolved and, and well knows the path. And with that, there is still this feeling of questioning as a parent, um, particularly as a mother, feeling an incredible sense of duty to, to maintain a, a, a normalcy for them while also living very public, very service-oriented, duty, dutiful lives, she says, dutiful lives. There is a, there is still this natural instinct, she says, as a mother to protect, to want to protect your children at, at all costs, at, 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 at all costs, and everything is at stake. And she's sharing that um, with my divorce from their father, it was essential in order to not, not, not only to maintain my, what you would refer to now as mental health, but to, to encourage the individualism and to be in a place of respect for myself and my family, my children, my children were very much not immune to the, and she says, the disturbances in my marriage and disruptions in my marital life. And she says, they are not, they are not ignorant to that. They are not saved from that just because you don't speak of it, you don't talk of it. And when you think that you are protecting your children by not she says I, she's like very careful not to criticize anybody else and their decisions about being in a marriage staying in a marriage for the kids or leaving a marriage for the kids and she's saying it really can't be about the children when it is about you and you are honoring yourself and respecting yourself so much and caring for yourself you are giving your children permission to see you as a person. And, and being a human being is extremely important because we, we sort of idolize our parents and we sort of see them as these superhuman expressions and of people, ex extraordinary people. And to see that they are human and they have needs and they can, they can spe specify what those needs are and that that is a normal thing, that it, it lets them be human too. Oh, wow. Do you think that has something to do with Harry now being so vocal about mental health and, and his mental health struggles and things and speaking about going to a counselor after your death and, and then now recently with all of the, the relationship um, challenges that he and his wife have had and in the royal family and, and with um, the pandemic and all of that and the move and their babies and everything like that. How do you, do you feel that your mental health and your caring for yourself gave some kind of an impression on Harry? Like, is there a legacy there? I'm not talking about like a hereditary, like a, a passing, the, passing a mental health down, mental illness or mental health stuff down. I'm talking about the way that you handled yourself, the respectful way and the very, you know, the way that you handled yourself and things. Oh, I've made mistakes. And she says, I've made mistakes. I've, I've been misled. And I maybe have trusted when I maybe perhaps shouldn't have. And, and my judgment was blurred at times, yes. And I feel that knowing that it could be very difficult for for either of my children to trust it it, it would make sense for them to have a a bit of a, a a struggle with that potentially have that be a struggle but for harry in particular i, I may perhaps because he was younger she says perhaps because of his age he was, he was m much younger, he, he didn't have 
as much of a, a, a mothering presence then. And not, that's not to say that William was so much older and had so much more opportunity, but I think it affected, it really Im impacted. Harry Moore in some ways and and I and it's hard to say that she says it's hard to really say that accurately because each of my ch each of the boys have their own lives and their own experiences and they get to talk about their feelings in their own time and in the appropriate circles it would be remiss to say that William affected or suffered any differently than Harry when he may just simply speak of things in private or handle things in a different way, whereas Harry is quite vocal and he ha always has been quite animated and expressive and you, he could not really hide his feelings anyway. And his personality just very outwardly known I think it, it, it makes sense, it is in line with his character, and I think he shares his experiences with integrity. That isn't something I can necessarily take credit for, but it is something that most certainly my death, or the absence of the mother, of, of his mother, she says, of his mother, she says mother, but she says the absence of his mother most certainly formed him and, and made an impression. And she's like, it's not like I had a choice in that, but it wasn't something that he, what, that we shouldn't, she says it's like, it's, it's, she's making me feel like it's not something that we should expect him not to be able to handle, although he was so young, you know, they were young, both the boys were. But she says there, there are dual expectations for both of the boys. Their paths are different with William and his expectations of being the king of England at, in, um, one day his very different set of expectations and behaviors that he has a great deal of pressure upon him and that is something that you cannot measure uh, and you can never really know and we may never really know unless he leaves some kind of private journals or has um she says I, he's he's much more private he's much more private he's been he's been um, taught privacy and for him to speak out of turn in any way or even perceived in that would never be something he would ever um, deter from or step out of or he just he just accepts the role that he has and, and the birth right that he has been that has been um, assigned to him he just he accepts it she says so does that make you feel sad? Like your two boys have two totally different expectations about like paths, you know, like Harry seems like he can choose his own a little more and William kind of has everything set out for him. Does that make you feel sad or do you feel any kind of different way about that? Because I mean, William's children, so your grandbabies, one day, you know, George will be the King of England. You know, and then then Charlotte, and then Louis, and you know whatever other children they may have in succession. And with Harry, he doesn't have that kind of. I mean, he doesn't even have to be in the United Kingdom as he isn't right now. You know, like how do you feel about that? Is that as a mother? Like, is that how do you feel about that? She says it's it is their destiny. This is something she says that you will come to learn over time and as you become more aware of the way, the rhythm of things, she says, you, us, as an audience, where, okay, so wait a minute, though, wait, 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 when you say destiny, we need to describe that a little bit because I feel like things are not fated or predetermined. What do you feel? To destiny almost seems like predetermined. She says, it is for William. He has a predetermined fate. He will be the king of England. When he was born, that was what was accepted. And yet he as a spirit accepted that. She says, 
to understand that there is this acceptance of a choice that is made prior to birth is, is a very hard concept to explain when you have a mind and a free will and have this kind of this feeling of almost contrast and conflicting human heart, head, soul, that destiny. And she says, all of these things seem very um, like a soup almost mixed together. And she says, yet when I use the term, when I share destiny, he was destined to be, there is a energy of like she's you guys there is an energy of choice in there so i just need to say that so for harry then there's not it almost feels like he's always this like quirky almost not outcast but kind of being in service and then kind of doing his own thing and then kind of coming here and then do she says oh no oh, the no the boys have always been very close very close and she says It's not because of the tragedy or the loss of their mother. She says, it's interesting because she refers, um, Princess Diana refers to herself as their mother, but she does it almost like in third person. And she says, it's not because of what you may think of the loss of, of their mother brought them together. She says, that's not, that's not necessarily the defining thing that created their relationship. The relationship was made before that. And an understanding of the brother, the brother bonds that they have. And while at the same time, the very different paths, she says tracks, different tracks their lives are on. And, and we're always on. And she says, this is as expected, Harry having a very different lifestyle and, and wanting a different way of life in the public eye but also still in the public eye, using his birthright for influence, for positive change, to effect global change, to make a difference that way. And William, in his succession to the throne and to providing a consistency, a traditional yet gently evolving monarchy, she says, so two very driven and purposeful lives and yet different tracks. <laughs> I mean, they look so different to me, too. I mean, these two boys, to me, I'm looking at them both and they, they couldn't be more different. And she says, and yet they were just normal little boys, normal brothers, she says. So it's, it's those moments that are so special. She says, I think, I think just watching television or watching a movie or, you know, with popcorn and sitting on the couch together. And she says, just those simple moments that, that many families, she says, many families, I think, may, may have taken for granted and yet are so memorable. She says, so memorable. And it's interesting because she says rememberable, rememberable. That's interesting. Is that even a word? It's interesting. All right. So the baby. So what do you think of the baby, the name? She says it's lovely. It's quite lovely. So here's the deal. Did they ask for permission? Can you tell me that? Like, is that too gossipy, you guys? Is that too gossipy to ask? Is that rude to ask? Like, we're friends, right? We can just chat and... And she kind of smiles and looks up and she says, Harry is quite respectful. He wouldn't um, just, it may seem as though he's off the cuff or, or, or makes assumptions. And she says, but there is a very heartfelt connection that he has between, between he and his grandmother and he and his grandfather. And it's more so an honoring of the relationship between his grandfather and grandmother than just about anything else. She says it's the, the marriage, the relationship of the two of them that is, is, is this heartfelt, very sentimental name. That's nice. Nice. Mm, I can feel that. Oh, I can feel that. It's really true. 
Yeah, so despite the reportings, Queen Elizabeth isn't up in arms or angry or upset or deeply hurt about that. She says, well, you would have to ask her that. You would have to ask her that. She could, she could answer that for you. And she kind of smiles. And then I look back and I'm like, no, <laughs> no. So the answer is no, she's not all upset about that. So, okay. Well, thank you. She's beautiful. That's what she's telling me. She's just, she's, she's absolutely beautiful. Beautiful. She says, I couldn't be happier for them. Mm -hmm. All right, you guys. So this is Bridget. We've been talking with Princess Diana in the afterlife, having a conversation June 2021 with the addition of a new grandbaby, Lilibet Diana Mountbatten Windsor who has joined us in June 2021. So thank you for that. Thanks for the conversation today. For those of you who are parents, uh, those of you who are mothers especially, I hope that this has been heartwarming for you to connect. And so you felt your humanness here, maybe cutting yourself a little bit of slack too, recognizing Princess, Di Princess Diana's perspective. So, yeah. See, afterlife celebrities, you guys, and influential people, they're just like the rest of us, all right? There's not anything all that unique or different about you that makes you weird or bad or anything like that. It's like we all have our stuff, right? And we're doing the best we can. Yeah, so try to be gentle with yourself. That's, that's my, my recommendation for today. Thank you so much for the conversation, Diana. I love it as always. Just, just lovely, absolutely lovely. Very heartfelt to connect with you today. And thank you here, viewers of Above Life Channel. Thanks so much for being here. I hope we've inspired your spirit today and filled you with some hope to keep you going. If you want to check out some of my other videos, go ahead and check out the playlist here for Princess Diana on Above Life Channel. And if you want other videos about other things intuitive and intuitive topics and my psychic vlogs, check out Fairy Grasshopper on YouTube. You can find me on social media on Bridget Inspired. And every Sunday you can experience Sunday Morning Coffee with Bridget, which is posted here on Above Life Channel. Thanks for being here.